Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today's video is going to be a Gucci lip swatch video. In case you're new here, hi, my name is Maika. I live in the Netherlands. I like to come on here to chat about eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Couture's reviews, and getting the use out of my makeup. And in recent years, I have fallen hard for the Gucci lipstick line. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be swatching these out and I'm gonna show you these on my lips as well as on my arm. Um, I have gathered eight of these sparingly over time. These are expensive. These are some of the most expensive lipsticks I have. I have two from each formula that spark my interest. They also do a lip balm, but I don't need a Gucci lip balm. So they're all lipsticks. Um, matte, satin, uh, voile, and brillant, brillant, I believe that's what it's called. And that's from like most intense to least intense. So we're gonna actually swap it around and go from least intense to most intense. This is a Lisa Eldridge lipstick that I'm gonna take off for you. And then we can get started. But before we do that, it may be good to know that I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, which greatly skews my makeup preferences. And because I have been buying, trying and reviewing makeup for more than a decade, when I say something is a favorite, you know it's a favorite. So if you are also a snow angel like me, or maybe you're not, but you just wanna stay tuned on when I post new videos, click subscribe down below. So I've taken off the Lisa Eldridge lipstick. That was Velvet Jazz, Jazz, and if you wanna see the rest of this makeup look, then you can, because I did just film this video for another video. So that's why I was wearing that very vibrant thing. Um, but Gucci, let's just talk packaging first, because these lipsticks, I mean, they are some of the most beautiful lipsticks you will ever see in your life, and each finish has a different design in the bullet. So the Brillante, have this black packaging with like, almost like a gemstone on it. The voiles have the white with the floral pattern. The satin is my favorite. It's a golden tube and then it has this like, Art Nouveau-ish kind of pattern on it. I'll also insert some close-ups for you to see the actual packaging. And then I have the mattes which are a little bit more like Art Deco-ish. They're a bit like, more uh, like again the gold, but then there's just a stripe running through down the side. So I have a nude and like a bright or a red in each of these so that we have a, a few options there. That's how I like to test out lipsticks. And I definitely didn't buy these in one go because one of these, they used to be 40 euros, but now the price has gone up and they're 42.50. Is it worth it? That's the question we're gonna ask ourselves when we are going to be going through these. But yeah, I love these and some of these I have already put in like top three favorites in certain categories because I love these formulas. What may be good to know, if you are sensitive to scents, you may not like these because they do have a florally kind of scent, a bit like a Gucci perfume, but less strong for sure. I don't really smell it, Unless, you know, once it's on, I only smell it when the bullet is really close to my mouth and I'm applying the product. So that may be good to go, good to know. But we have four different formulas here. So I want to go over each one, show you the swatches, show you the shades, and chat about these formulas as well. So the formula I was actually the least interested in because I did sort of buy these in order of like interest, but I was like, to round out the video, I may have to try this as well because I think this is actually one of their more popular ones. And this is the Rouge de Beauté Brillante. And I have the shades Peggy Taupe 204. And I have Jody Wild Mauve 714. Um, the packaging on these is stunning. Like the black design with like the golden tube. What I don't like about these is that they have a very balmy texture and they are really skinny lipsticks which if you were to put this in a makeup bag, the chance of this breaking is far, far greater than if they had just put it in like a classic bullet, I think, because this is so skinny and dainty that it doesn't look very great. So this is what Peggy Taupe looks like. Um, this formula is incredibly creamy and smooth. Um, it's very sheer though. This is very close to like lip balm but it does have color payoff. So I, I liken these a little bit to um, the um, Lisa, man, they're not really like Lisa Eldridge Luxury Lucents because I feel that these are, um, those have a bit more uh, pigmentation, I feel. 
but this is like wearing a tinted balm yet it does also stain your lips i found because i did wear the deeper one that i have here which is jody wild mauve i wore that for an entire day and you do get a little bit of that bitten look if you have one of the deeper shades so i like that but this shade is very sheer and very nude and i actually have another lipstick by gucci called peggy taupe and we'll see that those aren't the same so what you'll see in the gucci line is that a lot of the names pop up in the different finishes but they're not necessarily going to be the same shade in a different finish, uh, in case you are wondering. So this is what Peggy Taupe looks like in the Brillante. So let me pop it on. And this is Peggy Taupe. As you can see on the back of my hand, it looks like a brown, a straight up brown, but on my lips, it seems to have a little bit of red which is why I like it and I feel I can get away with it. It makes for a very nice like look with my hair and my eye color, I think. And that's one of the reasons why I ended up really becoming interested in these Gucci lipsticks is that they do some really unique, cool undertones, color stories. Their lip swatches that they put on their website are really, really great for being able to tell whether these are going to work for you because they will have swatches on different skin tones and people with like different levels of pigmentation in their lips as well because that's usually my struggle but i feel this works so well this is like perfect nude <laughs> perfect nude you can see it has a really nice payoff and these are so rich and creamy it feels like wearing lip balm but you're wearing lipstick which is why the next shade is a bit more of a challenge so let me take this off and we'll chat about jody wild mauve because jody wild mauve you can see how dark this looks in the two but you'll see when you swatch it it really isn't that intense like it's more like a plummy berry kind of shade almost purple and i thought this looked so interesting also on some of the models on the website and i was just like would this work on me and i think it does it's a really stunning very perfect fall shade actually i think it's a good shade for november And that's Jody Wild Mauve. So if you look at this in the tube, you may think, oh no, that's far too intense. In a swatch, it looks like a straight up purple. On my lips, it looks like a very pretty berry shade. It's such a good shade for the fall time. So with these, I think it's good to know that, you know, these don't always look as intense, especially in these sheer formulas. And I think this just looks really, really pretty on. It's perfect for fall. It goes really well with my eye look today. And this also uh, has that staining effect that I already mentioned. So this, when you leave this on and you really let it sit before you drink or eat anything, like a good 30 minutes to an hour, I feel that despite this being very balmy, it will sort of sink into your lips a little bit and leave that bitten look as it wears throughout the day. But these do warrant a little bit of like reapplication if you've really had lunch or anything. Um, because they are very sheer and balmy, I feel these last like four to five hours. Um, um, but no longer than that, you're not going to get a full wear of, uh, out of like a full day of wear out of this one lipstick. So here you can already see, like I'm trying to take it off and you can just see that it's a little darker already around that outer rim. Moving on to one of my favorite formulas, the Voile. What are these called? What is the full name? Because I, I don't want to mess it up. This is Rouge à Lèvres Voile. And I have 201, the Painted Veil and 301 May Coral. And these made me fall in love with the line because I think I bought the Painted Veil first and this is the line where I'm like, this is like a contender to like, if you like the look of lux uh, like Lisa Eldridge Luxuriously Lucents, but you want that and the shades in the Lisa Eldridge line don't really appeal to you or because you can only buy those online, they may be a bit harder to get. I mean, Gucci is available from more high-end retailers as well. So you can get them from more places and they you might actually be able to find a counter provided there's one near you. Um, so these may actually be easier to find even though they're more expensive, but you wouldn't have to pay for shipping. So I think if you were to buy like one Lisa Eldridge lipstick and you have to add shipping, you would get to a similar price point. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie because the Lisa Eldridge ones are like what, 33? Um, those are some of my favorites as well. So yeah, this is what the Painted Veil looks like. And this, 
I mean, when I, like, this is not the kind of lipstick shade that I look at and go like, I think I want to wear you. But something happens, like, you can just see that the level of pigmentation goes up just a little bit. Mm-hmm. A little less shine, but still very pretty, very creamy, sheerer formula, but m feels more like a lipstick than the other two, for sure. So yeah, the Painted Veil, I like swatching it on the back of my hand as well, like it doesn't seem to be doing anything, but this is why you need to see things on your lips. Because this, again, perfect nude status for sure. Let me show you. And that's what the Painted Veil looks like. It's more nude, I feel, on me than the... Um, Peggy Taupe one in the other line because this has a bit more warmth to it and it's lighter. So very often I don't like very light nudes on me, but especially if I want to amp it up a bit and make it look fresher. I'm not sure if I'm making sense. This looks really stunning on and this is just, especially like in the summertime and you're wearing like a bronzy smoky eye, this can work really well. I can just whack this on with almost anything and it will work because that's how I have been wearing it. This is the first one I bought. This was my first pick from the Gucci line to get. So, and this is one where I was like, when I swatched it on the back of my hand, I wasn't sure. And then the makeup artist put it on my face and I was like, yes, I like you. But I told you I had nudes, but also some brighter things as well. And the other shade that really stood out to me from this Voile line was May Coral. This is one that I bought in Harrods over the summertime, so I haven't been wearing it a lot yet. It's like a bright coral. And they also had this shade, but then in like cooler pink, which I thought might be prettier on me. But this was much better when I actually put it on. Like it gave a bit more warmth to my face. Um, and because it perhaps has that sheer formula, it works quite well, but you will see that it does have that pink running through it. So Painted Veil is much more warm toned and this is much brighter. It still has that pinky tone and it seems to have, I'm not sure if it shows up on camera like this, but in real life, I can see that there is a little bit of purpley blue running through it that you get to see when this catches the light. So I think that's why May Coral works for me. And this had been on my wish list ever since I bought Painted Veil, but it was out of stock all the time. So when I spotted it in Harrods, I decided to pick it up. And there we have May Coral. Isn't just this just the most stunning, like brighter, soft focus. Like it almost gives you like that blurred effect, I feel. And it's got that like watermelon pinky kind of vibe to it that I love. Like I call it popsicle. Like the popsicle vibe, like you've just eaten the popsicle in the summertime. I really like this. It's a little less shiny, a little less balmy than the one in the black packaging. Like the way these compare, I would say, is that this is shinier and is more like a lip balm. And this feels more like a creamy lipstick. Very much like the Luxuriously Lucens from Lisa Eldridge, where also if you just keep applying a second layer, you can build up the intensity, whereas these remain sheerer, I feel. Um, but that's not my ultimate favorite formula, because that award goes to the satins. Wowza. This, the, if I were to buy any more Gucci lipsticks, which now that I'm filming this video, I think I should just call it quits on that. But the satins, I would like to get some more shades from, for sure. And I think you'll see why when I show you the swatches. So first of all, the packaging of these is the best of all these Gucci lipsticks. I mean, this like Art Nouveau sort of like really pretty designed lipsticks. Again, I have two shades, a nude and something more vibrant. I have 203 Mildred Rosewood and I have 403 Love Before Breakfast. And Mildred Rosewood, like we all know that I like my deeper nudes. I like them when they're light like this. But th this, this is so pretty on. <laughs> this is so pretty on. And I spotted this on the models. I was like, oh, but that that's like my perfect nude. I like it if a nude has a bit more depth to it because I have darker eyes and also in my hair, you can just see that there is a little bit more depth. And if anything is too light, it kind of drains me because my skin is so light. So I actually need a lipstick to kind of set off from that. 
Um, where to put it? I think, yeah. I'm just going to put the satins underneath the these two, and then I can pop the mattes here because I have a Peggy Taupe shade that is also like another shade called Peggy Taupe, as I said. So this is what Mildred Rosewood looks like, and it's like a warm, rosy, reddish tone brown. That's how I would describe it. Let me show you this on. That's what Mildred Rosewood looks like. As you can see on me, it pulls more red. And I've likened it a lot to like what my Bite Beauty rhubarb shade does for me. That's perhaps a little bit more plummy leaning. This is a bit more warm toned. But it's like, you know, you want to wear a red, but a red is a bit too much. But you want it to be more warm toned. Like this is such a good shade for the fall time as well. I think this really ties everything together. And this, again, is a shade that I can wear with almost any look I'll do. And that's what I'm currently looking for in, like, more unique lipstick shades. is undertones that work really well with my complexion, but that I can wear with an array of looks. And not, like, you know, that one lipstick that only goes with the one makeup look that I don't end up wearing things as often. And then we have Love Before Breakfast. It's a fuchsia, it's a fuchsia pink. And if I go pink, I like these kind of like deeper, almost magenta leaning shades. Like this is the kind of shade that you see a lot in fashion right now. And I love it. I really, really do. But I would wear it more so as a lipstick than I would like a full outfit because this way you can play with it a bit more. But this is stunning, stunning. And this is the reason why I would like to get some more because now that you can see like these different things together, you can just see how much pigmentation this has but it's still a creamy formula, and it's a creamy formula that doesn't transfer. So as intense as these are, they don't bleed all over your face, they don't transfer to the bottom of your nose. They are intensely pigmented, rich, creamy lipsticks, but without the transfer. I don't know how they did it, but... This, to me, is one of the most revolutionary, like, innovative lipstick formulas I have tried in a long time. And that is what Love Before Breakfast looks like. But yeah, this... I mean... I, I don't have to say anything else about this other than to just show you this because I, I love this. I love this. And finally, for the mattes, we have two matte lipsticks. And I mentioned that I have Peggy Taupe in a matte. And I also have one of their reds. So this is a Goldie Red, which is like classic Gucci red apparently so that's why I wanted to try that to see what it would look like it's a bit orange toned as we will see but we're gonna end with that and let me see no so I can show you the difference this is called Peggy Taupe this is called Peggy Taupe this is the matte this is the brillante they're nothing alike they're nothing alike so I definitely didn't buy this to like have the same shade. I knew already from looking at the swatches online that this was far more brown toned, but this Peggy Taupe is a mauve and that's why I like it. So let me swatch it underneath the other one just so you can see the difference. Peggy Taupe Brillante, Peggy Taupe Matte. So don't be fooled by these shade names that you can see in this lineup. They're not going to give you the same shade. Some of them are quite similar, like Goldie Red they also do in other finishes. That seems to have the same undertone, but this is a completely different shade. Like, it's nowhere near. <laughs> nowhere near each other. But yeah, if they do a mauve tone, then of course I have to try it. And this seems more cool toned than some of the things that Lisa Eldridge does. And one of the things I don't like about her line is that there aren't a lot of cool tone mattes. This one is, but in terms of matte formula... I would say that this is just a touch too drying for my liking, now that I have so many of the Lisa Eldridge ones. That's still my favorite matte formula. These are nice, but I would say these aren't the price point, worth the price point.
and that's Be Peggy Taupe on my lips. As you can see, these go on with one swipe. They are insanely pigmented. Like, if you love super pigmented lipsticks, these are nice. They start off feeling quite creamy, but I feel these have a bit of a dry down, as, some, as if something evaporates from these. Maybe it's also the fact that it has a bit of fragrance in that. Usually, a fragrance usually also means alcohol, so could be that. But I do feel these to be a little bit drying if you do wear them for an entire workday. I feel that as the intensity of these lipsticks go up, the wear time of them improves greatly. These matte lipsticks, it's like putting on a lip li liquid lip. Like, these will not budge. Like, you can eat, drink, do anything for like a full work day. If you go out for drinks after, after work, maybe you want to touch it up. But these are very long lasting. I'd say 8 to 10 hours easily. You may have to touch up like that really like inner rim of your lip. But these work beautifully. And finally, Goldie Red. This is shade number 25. So this has a completely different shade name. And this is just your classic, more orange toned leaning red, I'd say. So let me swatch it right here. So you can see I've got a nice array here of like different tones and finishes that I wanted to, that I was interested in. And I think this goes really well. So let me show you what this looks like on. I mean, I pop a red lipstick on and I look fine. <laughs> That's sort of how I always feel with these. But yeah, the Gucci lipstick line does some really stunning red shades as well. Apparently Goldie Red is the Gucci Red, as I already mentioned. So that's why I wanted to try this to see if I like it. For me, if I want to go orange toned, I'll go for something like Lisa Eldridge's Velvet Morning. That's even more vibrant and more orange toned than this is. This definitely falls into like the classic category of like reds. But it does lean more orange toned rather than more blue toned, which is why I feel this may not be like 100% perfect for me. But if you have a warm undertone and you're looking for a good classic red, this is going to be your shade because it's very subtle. And I think if you have a very warm or maybe olivey undertone, that blue toned lipsticks can look really weird on you because the, the undertone just clashes. Whereas if you put something like this on, it's going to look like, like that really nice like 1950s classic red on you for sure. So on me, it pulls more orange, but that has to do with my undertone, I feel. So yeah, stunning lipsticks. I'll make sure to insert like a close-up of all of these swatches as well, because they're just... They're just gorgeous. They're gorgeous lipsticks. There is not going to be like a review going live of all of these in one go. I will be reviewing these over on the blog as well, but I'm going to do that very gently over there because um, I just wanted to give you an overview in today's video so then you can see what this line has to offer. Maybe you were looking for like a really nice gift for someone for the holiday season. I think they are very giftable, especially from the way they are packaged and very often with luxury brands. If you buy directly from their websites, you tend to get really pretty packaging as well. I know Dior does that. I don't know about Gucci. I got these from Sephora, Harrods, and Bayekorov here in the Netherlands, which is where they stock them online. So yeah, you can get uh, Gucci quite widely as well. So if you were looking to gift either yourself or maybe a family man member a bougie lipstick, then I think the Gucci line has a lot of shades to offer. They have a lot of different finishes and this was just my selection of what interested me. So I hope this video is helpful in helping you like know what this line is about and showing you some of the shade options. So uh, yeah, thumbs up the video if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make several videos every single week, so if you'd like to stay tuned for more, and then I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.